Hi everyone, Marco Di Stefano here and welcome to this new video of the virtual orchestration series. Uh, today we are going to see in depth what's behind uh, my latest composition, uh, which is based on a portrait and which is called Quando Fui Combattiente. Uh, the composition, as usual, you can find it here on my website, marcodistefano.art, or you can find it on my YouTube channel, of course. And the composition is based on a picture, this one, which has been done by a friend of mine, Vincenzo Vitale. Uh, you find the link to his uh, portfolio website on the description, uh, which is a, a, a picture uh, made in uh, La, La Palma, so in uh, Cuba, uh, back in 2015. The composition is based on the idea that this is a man with a very melancholic uh, sight. So, he has probably today a normal life, but he has probably something in his past which he will never forget. And uh, now let's go to the composition and let's see how I build that. So I wanted to give the idea of, let's say, a normal life by using a very simple uh, uh, melody. Uh, this melody is given to the piano, so you can listen to it here. So. That's it. As you can see, so I'm, I'm using a sustain for all the time. So the sustain is always there. And so close to the piano, there is also a felt piano which is playing and is uh, slowly entering and taking more the scene. So you can see here. The felt piano is this one. It's totally panned on the left and you see the panning is moving it more to the center and it moves to the center while the volume also get higher. Also uh, on top of that there is uh, this instrument charango which is playing uh, you can listen to it, it's giving the tempo. Here it is. And then the three together. Also for the felt piano, I'm keeping the sustain all time pressed and this gives this uh, huge resonance that you have between the piano and the felt piano and it creates really a, a, like a kind of huge space where the re re resonance is never, is never ending. Um, behind this uh, uh, piano, uh, so there are strings which are creating some textures. So what I've used here, now let's listen to just all of them. So again, I'm using the uh, chamber evolution And you can see
as you can see, all the strings are panned a bit to the right. And this is because if you look at this man, it's like, he's looking on the right. And what I wanted to do is that all on the right, there are all these kind of strings and textures. And then on the left, you have some more uh, instruments that you hear. Also, um, concerning the strings, there is uh, uh, these, I'm using a Spitfire Alb Albion 5 as a strings also. Let's hear this alone. So, let's see what I'm using as articulation. Collegno tratto. So then uh, I also have uh, these waves from uh, Chamber Evolutions again. And this is if we listen now to everything together, I, I will still keep all the samples out of it. Okay, here there is something interesting which happens. Actually, uh, this uh, first part is about the present, so it looks like some very normal moment, uh, very normal life, and then uh, it all uh, is uh, in the uh, in the tone of C, Do, um, and I introduce a, 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 a huge dissonance here because, as you can hear, for example, everything is in. C, at, at a certain moment you have on the bass playing a C sharp. Voila, look at this. Let's hear the solo. So this C sharp creates uh, this uh, dissonance, which in my intention is about uh, something, something which comes back from the memory. Okay, so uh, that then actually you will see the all the, the tone will completely move all to C sharp. And now to start to introduce a bit the past, I have some more bass instruments uh, in that specific case. So you can you have a brass long here first, and look at them; they are playing exactly C sharp. And you see they are going up and down. On top of that you also have waves bass, which are also playing C sharp. Voilà, but this is more a kind of C sharp chord. While still the charango is still playing a C. And all the melody is actually playing in C. Another thing I want you to listen to is uh, uh, at this moment, okay, so you also have some uh, Spitfire orchestra, sw orchestra Swarm, which comes. These are in the normal C tone. And most important, again, for the basses, so there is a section with the uh, London Contemporary Orchestra, the basses and Sally 
which are playing here again a C sharp. So let's listen all the C sharp stuff actually. This is mainly panned to the left. So it's like the past comes from here and it's all these bass instruments while the pres pre present so is uh, more coming more from here and then i'm all these things that are pan to the left will move more to the center okay let's listen maybe to this part for the last time after, uh, all together when actually there is the c sharp coming into the song listen the difference between the right and the left channel on the right the high strings in C on the left the low strings in C sharp and here there is a huge change because all the, the, the tone and completely the mood of the song changes into C sharp and it's like a moment in which uh, the memories from the past take the lead on his brain and now he's uh, completely ab thinking about the past and so the the, uh, the the first things to listen to is the felt piano here it's very important because he's carrying on the harmony so listen to it moves from C to C sharp Okay, and then on top of it, you have still the piano, which is uh, uh, playing, but now the piano is not anymore uh, prominent like it was before, but it's like some kind of thoughts. Look at it. It's very vague and uh, some sort of impressionism. Okay, so here the piano is uh, very fragmented, but it has a very important role because it is leading uh, what then it will become the main melody. So just listen at the first three notes of the piano. Da -da -dun. This one here, okay. Uh, that looks like a kind of memory that from the past, at the beginning you hear it very slowly, very, uh, very softly, but then this same sentence you will see will become a real a melodic line that will build stronger and stronger uh, at this moment actually what is important is that uh, you have the a trumpet uh, is a very uh, nice sound here uh, so if you were asking what I've been using this is uh, from the Spitfire audio labs and it's called uh, I think trumpet fields where it is yes this one voila this one trumpet fields in this one I'm using this articulation slowly bending which is actually bending always uh, a bit uh, alpha tone up and I'm using this in the melody so this you listen to it together with the piano so you see it's going it's bending up the air. Uh, 
just to finish this part here so maybe let's play it, it all together so because the, you also have uh, the waves of always chamber evolutions playing here you have these two eclipse and bramps these are scenes And here you have the strings which comes into the song. So let's listen to all of them together. Well. So what I'm using here, the symphonic, uh, Spitfire symphonic strings. The articulation is the spiccato. As you can see here, I also have a uh, diminuendo in time. And during this uh, moment of the strings, actually, we have uh, the melody which was uh, here introduced by the piano. This one here, which is developed by some horns and brass. In that specific case, I'm using uh, the horns from the Bernard Herrmann uh, Composer Toolkit and the brass from uh, Spitfire Symphonic, Symphonic Brass, uh, Tenore Trombone A2. So let's listen to this, the two together. Then actually in order to have a, a crescendo uh, and in the end I'm also adding another layer of Hans Zimmer strings, I'm using here the 60 violins legato. So, which And then, actually, the only things to add is that there is a contrabassoon, which is playing here, uh, to give a bit more uh, some bass. This is simply played, you see, this is playing a C, so totally against the fact that now we are in C sharp, and uh, it's a bit remembering a bit of the, of the initial part, and then introducing the fact that at a certain moment we will go back again to C. Uh, also, I'm using uh, so two uh, VST libraries here, in that specific case, Brahms and Eclipse, and what they are doing is simply adding some bass. Eclipse, and this is Brahms. And then after this, there is again the uh, the composition comes back to the initial idea. 
Now let's listen all to the development of this second part. I just forgot to mention that I'm also using these effects from, Speed uh, from uh, Albion 4. And then these sounds of brass high at the end. All the two are from Albion 4. And then, so let's listen to this ending here. And the end of the crescendo. And you can see that uh, after this, there is a, a synth which is playing, actually this is a sign uh, uh, signal. Listen to it. Which is, uh, I wanted to give like, uh, this is the typical sound that for example you, uh, you might hear after a loud uh, sound, like uh, some sort of explosion. So I wanted to give this... Uh, the, the fact that uh, something big just happened and then you still have on your ears he has on his ears the sound that remains after uh, and then this introduces completely again exactly the same as the beginning <laughs> And it ends again, so we are in C, but you see it will end again in C sharp. Voila, because I wanted again to give the idea, okay, so it's just a remember, it's just some rememberings that you have, but they are still, and they are always there. Uh, yes, you know, your past never uh, forgets you. And so, on top of that, I, have, I added uh, the several sounds, sem uh, mainly samples, uh, which are, some comes from public domain and some I actually uh, both license on Audio Jungle because I wanted to give a bit of more the idea of a kind of documentary. Uh, the first one is this one at the beginning and is about a lady which is playing a song, uh, which I don't know which song it is, by the way, that was it's part of public domain on Pond5. Voilà. And you can see which is that it is merged with the song. So there is some automation that automates the volume and automatically fades out. Uh, the second sample I have used here is uh, uh, this one here. It's again another recording of people which are playing, uh, which are singing a song, and uh, it comes here in the uh, where it where it starts the crescendo. So this is the 
let's hear in solo. And I actually use this part, which seems some kind of the main theme of the song, to enter together uh, with the string. So it makes an incredible effect to listen to it. And so then it fades out and then later what I wanted is to create uh, some kind of memories about uh, warriors and about being a fighter. So I ended up buying these uh, two samples from Audio Jungle. One of them is simply actually an army which is walking. And the second one is about uh, people which are demonstrating on in a very crowdly way. And so listen how this has been merged in the composition. The last sample I added is uh, this uh, one of uh, kids uh, singing, uh, actually I believe this is uh, the Cuban uh, uh, national song, listen to it. The song is called La Bayanese and uh, this is actually happens at the end of the song where there is again this dissonance on C sharp. And again, it creates a bit of contrast because you move from a very nice melody in C, you hear these uh, uh, C-sharp notes, and then you hear these kids uh, which are playing uh, very, uh, very happily. So the idea is like actually to create this contrast about being, uh, hap being happy in the present, but maybe having something back in the past, which always come back. Okay, that's it for the composition. Maybe just now I want to show you about the time. Uh, so there is not a linear time in the composition, but as you can see here, in order to make it as much realistic as possible, I have been tapping the time like a kind of a director of orchestra. And then I have merged the time that which I was tapping into the composition. Here the time is linear because I really wanted it to be linear. Uh, then there is the desecration and then, uh, then there is again up at time. Uh, concerning the uh, uh, the resources, I'm doing, I'm running all this uh, with 17 gigabyte of RAM. I'm using my templates so with VN Ensemble Pro, where you see that I have all my instruments. But as you can see, just a few of them are really loaded. So the one in blue here, one and two, a bit more for the strings, 
and this. Then concerning the different instruments, every instrument, uh, so for each of them, I made a selection uh, on the microphones that I wanted to use. So you can see which. Okay, sometimes these are not included because I'm not using any of the articulation uh, from this uh, block here, but I'm just using this articulation here. So only these microphones are set. And uh, and all this uh, it takes no more than 17, 17 gigabyte of RAM. And then the last things I want to show you is about the mix. So for the mixer, as you have, might have seen in my other composition, so this is uh, huge, there are a lot of things loaded, but I'm not using all of them. So I'm having uh, some uh, Neutron 2 uh, to have some EQing on the different instruments. So for example, let's open one of them, uh, for example, the Felt Piano. Well, you can see I'm doing very, very little things and only using the equalizer always. So if we take another one, maybe uh, the the Sally from here. Well, I'm in this case, I'm really cutting out the bus because it was really too much and so on. At the end, all these channels are grouped and they end up into this group here. So woodwinds, brass, strings, mix and all. But then before there is also some groups like, uh, for example, this is all, the, what is it? So this is the group I'm using for uh, the Spitfire symphonic strings. And here you have the reverb. The reverb channel is here and I'm using Reverence LA Studio. I like it very much, this set setup. And then, okay, of course, I have also for all the samples, I'm using, uh, I'm having some EQing and uh, some reverb. And then on the last one, I have my Ozone 8, where I am doing little things also. I'm still reducing a bit the bass and in, uh, boosting the high. I'm having so dy some dynamics here uh, because I wanted to, to compress a bit more the low band than the high band but you see it's really a bit i'm boosting off four decibel everything and then pushing to the maximizer so at the end i have a minus one objective that's it so i hope that you will uh, that you have seen something interesting in this video don't hesitate to leave me your comments if you want to ask me something specific to this composition and of course, subscribe to my channel and uh, uh, go and listen to this composition if you have not done it yet. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.